and welcome to Capital Review. I'm Thismeen Mafus, and we have special coverage of the governor's race in Maryland. We invited both of the gubernatorial candidates to our studios so you can get to know them before you head to the polls. And we start with Democratic gubernatorial candidate Wes Moore. Wes, thank you so much for joining us in the studio. I'm and so happy to be here. Welcome to Capper Review. What a year you're having. It's been a year. Yeah, it's in August during the primaries, you went up against 10 Democratic candidates. You've never ran for public office or held public office, but you won. So clearly, you resonated with voters on the road. What messages do you think uh, Maryland voters and Maryland Democratic voters resonated with? Well, you know, I, I think when we decided to start this campaign, and, and you're right, I mean, I was literally polling on 1% when I first began this race. And the idea was saying, I want to go everywhere. I want to go to every part of the state, all 24 jurisdictions in the state of Maryland. And you want to go and listen and hear what people are talking about, and then also talk about how my unique experiences and unique backgrounds really could help to meet this moment. Where I tell people, you know, I've been a public servant for much of my life. I've, you know, led soldiers in combat in Afghanistan. I ran a successful small business that was helping students make it to and through college. I, I ran one of the largest poverty fighting organizations in America. And so I, while I've been a public servant for my whole life, I just haven't been a politician. But the thing that I saw that people around the state that was resonating was that wasn't what they were looking for. They were looking for someone that has a history of solving big problems. Someone that has a history of working across sectors and working across political lines to be able to say, how do we get at the root issues that families are, the root challenges that families are facing and come up with bold solutions to be able to address it. And so I think we were able to show people that that executive leadership, uh, the understanding of being the ones who are closest to the challenge or the ones who are closest to the solutions, that's what Marylanders were looking for. And I think that's why our message resonated. So you also served our country as a U.S. Army captain. You also fought in Afghanistan. And that experience shaped your view of patriotism. Yes. In fact, you say that you were exhausted about hearing about patriotism by Republicans. Elaborate on that. Yeah, I, 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 I refuse to be lectured. Uh, about what it means to be a, a patriot. You know, I think about it in the case of, of, of my grandfather. You know, my grandfather was actually the first one on my mom's side of the family born in this country. And when he was just a toddler, because uh, my great-grandfather was a minister and a very vocal minister, and when he, my grandfather was a toddler, my great-grandfather picked him and the rest of the family up and left this country in the middle of the night because they were run out by the Ku Klux Klan. And much of my family always said they would never come back to this country. And much of my family never did, except my grandfather. He came back because he said this was his place of his birth. And as he said in all of his humility, you know, this country would be incomplete without me. So he came back. He went to an HBCU. He became a minister himself, just like his father. And my grandfather died when he was 87 years old, had a deep Jamaican accent his entire life, and was maybe the most patriotic American I've ever met. He loved this country. He loved everything about it, what it stood for, the opportunities that it presented to him and his, and, his, and, his, and his children and grandchildren. And so when I think about my definition of patriotism, my definition is my grandfather. My definition is the people who I serve with in Afghanistan, people who are willing to put their lives on the line because the country asked them to. And so the idea that someone else would, could, could uh, you know, give me a lecture on what it means to be a patriot, particularly when, when, when you know, the argument that they're making, you know, where I'm literally running against someone in this race right now whose definition of patriotism was putting on a baseball cap and going down to the Capitol on January 6th and asking people to join him while he called Mike Pence a traitor for certifying a legal election. That's not patriotism. And so I think it's important for us in this moment to be able to take that back to be able to take back this idea of a love of country that one political party owns that. No, it does not. The American people own that. And that includes American people like myself, like my grandfather. All of us were willing to say that this country is worth fighting for. And that's a, a framework of what I'm putting, uh, putting on this entire campaign. And a lot more to talk about with Wes Moore, including how he plans to leave no one behind if he's elected. Stay with us. You're watching Capitol Review.